Why use gasoline when you can cook with diesel? Hello YouTube, this is <laughs> Bowtie Media, my name is Dakota, and uh, this is indeed the Diesel album reaction, the debut album from Diesel, who is better known as all-time NBA legend Shaquille O'Neal, the daddy dubstep Don himself. Um, but uh, yes, uh, for those of you that don't know or are out of the loop, um, Diesel, or uh, Shaquille O'Neal, has become a bit of a dubstep producer as of late and DJ, and uh, he's been loving the scene, he's been loving all things music and he has just dropped his debut diesel album technically he had rap albums back in the day but his debut diesel album on monster cat and so it's 10 songs long and there's a bunch of features on this um, production features and so uh, we are going to listen through this uh, give it a full reaction and run through and uh, i am excited for this project um I'm, I'm very fascinated by it for many reasons uh one because it's shaquille o'neal uh and two because i it the stuff that we heard the singles were actually not too bad. I actually kind of like them for the most part. Um, they are pretty much just like kind of your, your one-two headbang, just like <laughs> go for it. But uh, I am very intrigued to see how the rest of this project is going to be, uh, all things considered. So uh, without any further ado, let's hop into it. There's 10 tracks long, and we are starting with Warfare from the Gorilla Warfare album. And so... Uh, let's head into this. I have not given this song a first listen yet. I haven't listened to anything yet other than the singles that were released. So here we go. Let's hop into it. This is Warfare with uh, CeeLo. Here we go. Point that motherfucker out. Let him know it's war. Start a riot. Start a fight. Without half the album is explicit. Right. Meet in the middle, settle the score. Point that motherfucker out, let him know it's war. Start a riot, start a fight. Start a marsh pit, start from left to right. Meet in the middle, settle the score. Point that motherfucker out, let him know it's war. <laughs> <laughs> Motherfucker, just done yet oh keep that atmosphere going okay warfare the first track of guerrilla warfare uh i will say the, like these are fun songs like these are like pretty like they go hard as festival like bangers and they just like it's not taking it it's, i wouldn't say it's not taking itself yeah, it's really, it's not like quite taking itself too seriously, but also not trying to be so intricate. It's just, it's just meant to be like a festival banger. Like it's literally what it's meant to be. It's meant to be just played at the clubs, meant to be played at a festival and meant to just go hard. Uh, it's not supposed to be the most intricate thing ever. It's supposed to just go. And um, honestly, I'm, <laughs> I'm down for it. Uh, I, I don't think it's the most like 
absolutely creative thing in the world, but like it's fun nonetheless, and it it, it it's definitely an enjoyable listen. Um, when they we kind of remove the 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 pre thoughts of it being something like this larger like storyline narrative or all this kind of stuff, and you're just like, no, this is just this is just banger, 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 banger all the way through ten songs, and um, I, I kind of enjoy it. Um, yeah, I, I'm shocked how much I'm actually enjoying this, especially because I'm not the hugest, like, big bro-step, dub-step kind of guy. Uh, there's stuff that I enjoy and stuff that I that I don't, obviously, but um, when it comes to it, I, I want my dub-step with a little bit more flavor in it, and this doesn't quite have that, but it's still just, like, I don't know what it is. Like, it's just, like, kind of like a, just like a, a fairly basic standard track that just kind of works. Um, so I'm intrigued to hear what the rest of this project is going to be like. So let's, uh, let's hop in. Uh, we have a new song though, uh, that, um, sorry, not a, not a new song with Bangerhead. There was an original, an original reaction I did to that, which maybe I'll remember to put the card up here, but, um, yes. So this is not technically the first reaction, but we will head into Bang Your Head with Heritage, which is my favorite of the singles so far. So, uh, here we go. listen to the song the more I really enjoy it honestly like this is this is the definition of a banger like I really do enjoy this oh, I forgot about I just forget about the section every time a little odd, but you know, get a little mix up. I still really enjoy that song. Like, seriously, there's just something about it that is just so uh, carefree and just explosive. That is just, it's contagiously fun um, for a dubstep track that I, like, it's just, it, it, it's like there's no pressure when this is being produced. It's just going ham for it. And so uh, this is, 
it, it's so fascinating. Um, <laughs> I just, I mean, you guys have already probably had your um, thoughts already on Banger Head, but I, I, I still enjoy that one quite a bit. So I don't think something's going to top that, this album. I, uh, I enjoy that quite a bit. So uh, let's get into a, another single, though. This is No Fear with Jessica Autofred. So uh, here we go. This one is an interesting track. Uh, that might be the most diverse, I think, of anything here. We'll see. standard, but the second one is interesting, so it's already been released, so I know it. fear <laughs> this is just another like like I, I i promise you i am not just like enjoying this because this is like a like a shaquille o'neal thing and this is just for like clicks or whatever but like this is like i genuinely am enjoying this more and more with a full listen um it just has like a certain energy and atmosphere and just like toned the project as uh, holistically now that I just like am sort of on board with and I'm just like yes 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 like I I know he does tons of live shows and I really need to get to see um a DJ Diesel show for sure now or uh, some play, play at some point but um man <laughs> it's just uh it's nuts uh it is it is absolutely it's it's fun and I, I like that that song had a bit of a switch up too at the end where it made it into a bit of a like a like bass speed house kind of fusion style track and um that's another one too where i didn't like at first i was like yeah it's kind of fun but like the more i listened to it in its holistic sort of um uh in accompaniment with other songs i'm like actually this is it's doing more favors for itself as a part of a greater whole so um I like No Fear, but uh, let's head into some new tracks uh, because we've only listened to one new track so far. Uh, so this is Watch Your Back with VRG and Blackway. The first time I, th I saw this, I thought this was VGR, like video game remixes. And I was like, what the frick? And I was like, uh, <laughs> but no, it is a VRG and Blackway who I've never heard of before. But uh, let's hop into it. This is Watch Your Back. <laughs> A short one, 225. It's the shortest. I got a bad bitch from St. 
Croy, but she keep playing mind games. So many flex. Every day I wake up, as a 10 hour time change. So many niggas pocket watching me, cause they see that I'm still in my prime ways. Sending my stick up kids to go handle my beef. I call them kebab gang. So fuck all that. Watch your back. <laughs> it's a little different. Um, <laughs> it's like a weird, like, screech, but not a screech. It's like a rumble of sorts. So fuck all my eyes, put them in raw papers, I'm not. Fuck up with y'all haters, I'm hot. Got on Dior shades, they're like, um, I'm in the bar, clays with my pops. Remember the hard days that they stop? My niggas all making that guap. Been in the car chase with the cops. Fuck all of them and fuck all my eyes. Watch your back. That's so fun. Um, <laughs> part of me loves and uh, like not hates, but like I just <laughs> I think it's so fun the um, the vocal parts that uh, Shaq adds in just because like it's so like you like his voice is just so iconic and you just like hear these moments of him just like I'm coming to the mosh pit or like bang your mole and it's just like <laughs> it is like so fun and adds so much more energy to a track too uh, and it's one of those ones that I also love because for those of you that for people that wouldn't know this is like Shaq and then if you like hear a song for the first time you're like I, is that is that Shaq? Is that Shaquille? And like, it's one of those, like, is, did I hear that right? Because um, <laughs> a lot of people know his voice. Uh, quite iconic, but... Uh, yeah, production-wise, uh, that was probably my least favorite of the songs so far. It just is a massive wall of sound. Like, it is just like the... It's like a... It's just a screeching wall to, of some sorts, and um, wasn't quite on board with it as much. Um, it just felt... Uh, the, the mixing felt a little bit muddier on that one, too, especially with kind of adding a bit of a, like, a kind of a rap... Um, a vocal there from Blackway, and so there's just like a there there's there's a certain clarity and tone that I expect when there's more intentional vocals like something like that, uh, and then I didn't feel like I quite got it on this one. It just felt like it was like a last minute addition in, at some point. Like it, the vocals almost felt like it's like something that you would layer on top of in like a mix of some other sort. Like they just did the vocal themselves and or like this an acapella version, and then you just like kind of layered it on top. So. Um, yeah, uh, so it's still, like, not a bad song, but just not so much my flavor uh, of the other one, so. Uh, but let's hop into the next one, uh, Romanthony Adventures. Uh, this one will be very interesting because it's got Sultan on it, and uh, there's only been one song of Sultan's that I've actually really enjoyed, and that's Elbow Grease with uh, Ray Volpe as well. So uh, I'm very fascinated to see how I like this one. I've not been a particularly huge fan of Sultan in the past, so uh, let's see if uh, how I like this one now. So here we go. This is Romanthony Adventures. And this is the longest song. We went from the shortest to the longest. Oh. I like the tone. Classic, like, Arabian atmosphere. Oh, the 
classic Sultan drum pattern. Really unique. The structure feels really strange on this one. So I'm intrigued to see where it's gonna go with its finale. I do like this in-between section a lot though. I've always been a sucker for like Arabian tones and sounds. Yeah, there's that Sultan drum back. to an atmospheric outro too. What were those vocals at the end? What even was that? Or the point of those, but... Um, okay, Romany Adventures. Uh, yeah, that's my least favorite, I would say, so far. And that's just because, I, like I said prior, um, I'm just not a fan of Sultan, I think, a lot. His style is not one that I particularly resonate with. Uh, and so it's just, a, it's just like a structure and um, the way that the song kind of transitions from one element to another that just doesn't quite flow with me particularly. So, um, and that's just been like, that's just history for me. That's just like a, not too much of a fan of, of his necessarily drops. I actually really love the off drop sections. I think the, the verses here are great. Um, I think they're, they are really great in atmosphere and in just like establishing a kind of um, setting or narrative set piece for the, uh, for the song. And so, I liked it quite a bit, uh, but I just, um, yeah, you know, I didn't quite, um, didn't quite feel the the production end of it, where I didn't quite feel the, uh, the just the power from that track particularly. I don't know the 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 kind of middle because Sultan has the very similar structure where it's like the um, like the like kind of one two like a heavy or light heavy light heavy light heavy uh, and then into like the dun dun like it's a, what, something something like a or something else like that and something something then like do, 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 like something like that. And uh, I hope that made sense, but uh, yeah, it's just not so much my flair, and it felt like it was just a little too much. It felt like it was a little uh, trying to do too much with um, not enough setup, I think, on that track particularly. So uh, that felt dominated by Sultan, which is sadly not my flair, uh, which is, I mean, okay, I'm not going to love everything, so uh, that's that, though, but... Let's head into the heat with Crank Dat. This was the second single released beforehand, so this uh, is the last one that we've already heard something of. So uh, here we go. This is Heat. Oh, yes. 
notes when it's not skip any beats. Give me some of that heat. That's right, motherfucker. Give me some of that heat. This one is different than the other single so far. I feel less on board with this one with giving it more listens, I feel like. I feel like I'm picking it apart more with, with more listens. Right, motherfucker. Give me some of that heat. How surreal would it be to be like a dubstep artist and then you make a freaking song, Shaquille O'Neal, in the middle of the song, dude, just saying your name like crazy. Um, okay, Heat. Uh, this is one that uh, I think I'm less on board with uh, the more I listen to it. Uh, I just feel like it gets messier and messier each time I listen to it. I don't know what it is exactly about the track. Um, it's I think it's kind of similar to uh, the one before, Roman Anthony Adventures, where it just feels like it's trying to do too much without an established tone or established structure. And uh, I, I particularly, uh, so there's, I feel like there's two styles of Cranked At. There's Cranked At that's a little bit more electro focused, that is uh, like, a, or electro bass house focused, that's more uh, on, on like a Monster Cat for the most part, where it's more sound design focused. And then there's the Cranked At from like a Disciple, where it's just like a headbang, it's just like a just go for it, loud volume walls of sound. Um, and we got the like more Disciple style of Cranked At from this track, particularly, because that's what this record is, that's what the whole album is and so I get that uh, and so that's just not my style of crank up that I enjoy as much I really like the more sound design more uh, I know electro focused style from cranked at so uh, not a bad track but just another kind of middle of the road like kind of standard dubstep one for me personally but um, yeah but we got a couple more to get through so let's uh, let's keep it going keep the party rocking as we've got middle f u uh, by uh, company or with diesel and company so oh it's middle fingers up that's what it is that's what it means uh so here we go this is uh middle fu it's a fun play on words because this means fu and you know I pr yeah yeah <laughs> I 
this is going to be a more drum step driven track with more kind of like a percussion rhythm. As from the front to does. the back, middle fingers up from the front to the back, middle fingers up from the front to the back. This one, I'm feeling it. Lots of room to breathe here, which is very interesting. Unlike a lot of the other tracks. Interesting outro, too. Hmm, I'm actually surprised there's like some like semblance of like <laughs> earlier when I started this, I, I felt like there wasn't in, very intentionally not like a narrative. There isn't kind of a storyline going throughout, but and not like there really is with that, but it's just like it feels more intentional to have that breathing room at the end and in the middle of the tracks and to say something in the in, in between that just normally when you do that, it, it's a semblance of some larger story or some larger thing to be told or something like that. But um, yeah, I uh, also I also didn't mind that one. I actually I, I quite enjoyed that. I don't think. Um, it was as nearly as good as some of the other ones, like I thought, like Banger Head or Warfare, but uh, that was uh, it was pretty solid. And I'm also pretty meh on company for the most part, just in terms of uh, I think their stuff is a little bit too intense for me. Generally speaking, I'm more of like a uh, I'm more of a of a chill kind of <laughs> generally uh, like an indie pop kind of future based kind of person. But um, so that's quite funny that uh, we're listening to this now. But uh, I do like my dubstep as well. But um, so yeah, company is like a middle of the road for me in just terms of that's just not my style of flair that I'd listen to time and time again but uh some stuff really shines out and that wasn't too bad I there was hints and semblances of like of really really fun elements like there were a couple growls and some uh and some fake outs that I like really liked uh the just the style of it and the tone of where it was going and I kind of wish there was a little bit more of that throughout um which is kind of hard to explain so I don't I can't really pin exactly what it was about those sections that I enjoyed um but yeah just I guess the just the production elements of it but yeah, so let's head into uh, our eighth track here. This is Killa with Trigger uh, is here. So uh, let's get this one going. This is Killa. Well, oh, they literally put X's in all of their song titles. <laughs> I 
never heard of Trigger before. Where are they from? Nothing that looks like a really long. Looks like a slower BPM for this one. This is, like, that was a trap song, really. Or a trap drop, at least. It is labeled as dubstep, though, but... Monsquette's not always been <laughs> the best with genres. And not like it really matters anyways, but... Just an observation I've made. Ironically, that I don't know if it's the right word for it, but that felt like the safest song of the project so far. Um, it just kind of didn't really have any individual flair or style to it that I think was um, made it really stand out compared to some other tracks, or didn't quite have that. Um, yeah, I don't know. It just it just didn't quite have like a certain X factor to it that I'm like, oh yes, this is why this song is more unique than some of the other ones. And so, uh, yeah, that one just felt like a kind of there this felt like a little bit of a, a tad bit of a filler one i would say for a project like this um and that is typically also where filler songs kind of go is the seven eight nine spot or the last uh like three four five or last like two three four spots of an album um so yeah uh it's okay uh this one just felt like a kind of standard it did have like a, a real like dubstep almost even rhythm style uh, at the end so that one just was, that was okay for me. Uh, didn't didn't absolutely blow me away. So, uh, but let's head into the last couple tracks here. Uh, this is Warzone with Rated R. Uh, here we go. Oh, 
when people say you're infected by aliens, that's what dubstep sounds like. That is what this sounds like. This genuinely sounds like we're trying to go for dubstep, alien dubstep. feels like aliens are coming to affect you. <laughs> Seriously, that song feels like aliens are going to abduct you just in a dubstep form. And like, not even like a, not even as a joking way where some people say like, oh, dubstep sounds like aliens abducting you. It, it sounds like that's what they were intentionally going for. Like that's the sound design of the track and it's meant to be like beaming up to a mothership of sorts. And so uh, that was, that was a fun uh, stylistic track. Uh, again, I don't know if the, the dubstep necessarily resonates with me um, more so, but I do think it's kind of just a, <laughs> just a mindless turn your head off and just go like that to it and so um i i, I will say i don't think the the fake outs were as maybe impactful as i maybe thought they should have been or could have been especially the the jump back in but uh i do like the the, the tone of that one that one that's quite <laughs> quite a fun funny one that just makes you uh like sort of giggle and also just like the whole time as you're going so uh yeah that was that was a fun that was a fun listening experience so uh let's give the final track of the album a listen though this is hit him like uh with chassis and cosmos this uh in theory is the final track so it should be a bit of a uh more of a standout style track as it's kind of your book end finale so uh here we go this is hit him like Explosive finale, that's for sure. 
This thing is just going. Holy. to to close it out but um that is it uh that is the guerrilla warfare album uh, first of all let's talk about hit him like uh that is what i expected it to be in terms of its grand finale nature uh esque where it was like this just explosive no nonsense just in your face blah 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 drill gunshot like just like and that's exactly what i expected that to be and uh it was it was that uh it was definitely that it went hard it went uh, quite hard i would say so <laughs> uh, that was a fun closer um but uh i mean my thoughts on it though like uh, critically of some extent but uh yeah it just like another kind of just banger standard dubstep just headbanger uh, and that's what this album is that's what it meant to be so in that sense i they were really it really quite worked but Okay, let's talk about this album as a whole. Uh, first thing I need to mention about uh, Guerrilla Warfare is this album uh, really is not meant to be that, like, critically reviewed and, and like, thought about in depth and real detail and, and, and manipulate in minute details. You're not, like, you're supposed to just... Like, that's that's the point of the record. That is the point of this project. That's the point of Guerrilla Warfare. That's the point of DJ Diesel. Uh, and so in that sense, this album was uh, definitely a, su a success. And so uh, it, it's, <laughs> I mean, uh, yeah. People are going to obviously review and rate stuff and, and talk about EDM in a critical manner, which I will also do to this project. Um, but as it stands in its purpose to just go hard, it exceeded that, I would say, exceeded the expectations I had for it. Um, it, it was quite fun. I really don't think there was uh, anything too necessarily over the top or anything too, like, I thought the mixing was was well put out through, through the whole project, the mixing and mastering. I thought it sounded cohesive and it had that kind of through line all throughout with even Shaq's vocals. And um, I think as a, as a full unit, I think it worked actually quite well and cohesively worked together. And it didn't feel like it was this kind of just uh, amalgamation of random tracks here and there with a bunch of different features. It really did have a sense of um, togetherness throughout the project, which is honestly not what I expected. Um, which kind of leads me to the second part I wanted to say is that like this, I, <laughs> um, like Diesel is also it, it, it's Shaq and it's also uh, Brian Bayati. I think I want to say but Brian Bayati. Like some, he's one of the producers uh, here and he's like the kind of partner of Diesel. And my assumption is he's doing most of the production here. Um, he's I believe a producer a producer from Vegas. But uh, he is definitely doing, I believe, a lot of the production here. And that's no shame to Shaq here because, like, obviously Shaq is, like, he does so much. And he, like, I think he mainly, mainly wants to focus on uh, DJing, though, not necessarily producing. So I'm sure he knows what to do. And he, he like, kind of has ideas and minds of what he wants to actually make in the tracks. But uh, I don't think he's the one that, that's really hands-on, like, really making the track. And that's okay. It's not like I expected him to. And if he does, then that is incredible. Way to go. Dude has insane talents in so many different areas and that's ridiculous but um yeah so that's no like uh, like um any like i'm not putting Shaq on like a lower pedestal that's just kind of the nature of the a project like this and having a such a huge celebrity like um Shaq go, being a producer so um 
in that sense, like it, like I, like I enjoyed it. It was a fun project. Um, it's not something I really think you can take it. I don't think you can take it too seriously. It's meant to just be enjoyed and just like at a real. It's meant to be enjoyed at a festival or club. So like this setting that I'm in here, talking to a camera in a studio, isn't really the setting that it's meant to be. I still enjoyed it for what it was, but this is meant to be uh, listened to with a thousand other people around you. Again, I'll go and. That's, that is the purpose and point of this record. And again, in that areas, I think it did that quite well. Um, I think it was fun. Um, I think it was like, it, there's just like, there's just a certain like, I don't know, X factor energy to the whole, uh, surrounding the whole project that just feels um, like homely and it feels friendly despite being <laughs> quite abrasive at times in that sound design uh, throughout the different track lists or the tracks. But uh, yeah, I like, I enjoyed it. I, I enjoyed it. Um, critically, uh, I will, I will, it's not the most creative, like so crazy out there production in the world. It's not um, this brand new style of dubstep that you're never going to hear. It's pretty safe and standard in terms of what the uh, culture is right now and setting of like dubstep music, bro step music. And um, that's that's okay. That's what's sort of meant to be. It's not supposed to be this record genre breaking, um, genre defining, like culture defining album. It's not meant to be that. And so uh, I, I think this is I think this is solid. I think this is a way to go. Um, Diesel, way to go, Shaq. Uh, way to go, all the producers on here. Um, I'm honestly, again, I just want to reiterate, I'm actually shocked that the other producers, it didn't feel like it was just like a feature fest where it's just like a different style of song, different style of song, different style of song. And they all kind of came together to make a really nice through line of an album. So uh, yeah, way to go. Way to go, Shaq. Way to go, um, Diesel. Uh, Diesel team, I should say. But uh, yeah, that's uh, that's kind of my final thoughts. But I'd love to hear what you have to say about this project. Um, let me know in the comment section below. But other than that, I am Dakota from Botai Media. And I will see you guys in another video.